How are you doing today, sir? Good to see you, Steve. Where, where are you? That's a cool backdrop there. Uh, so you're seeing I'm in Brazil. I'm at a convention called CCXP, which is the one of the biggest Comic Cons in the world, biggest one in Latin America. It's like 10 minutes from closing, but you can sort of see uh, how insane it is. It looks incredible. Like it's it's uh, uh, it's effing crazy. If you want to know the truth, like look I, I, at I, it. No, it, it is. It's like I was thinking maybe that's your day to day office where, where we're like talking from. It's if like, we had if we had talked like 20 minutes ago, you would have seen Keanu Reeves and like amazing. just like thousands of people here. It was insane, you right. know. But anyway, enough of that. Uh, I just want to say congrats on the movie. And I don't make I don't appreciate you making me cry. So, um, you know, F you. I'm joking, obviously. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching it. And, and I, I'm, you know. But, I, you know, it's a life affirming film at the end and I hope it made sure. you laugh as well. Listen, a hundred, a hundred percent. I as yes. Um, but I definitely want to talk to the fact that uh, Tom Hanks is one of the greatest actors of all time. And what is it like actually collaborating with someone like that who literally could make reading a phone book phenomenal? Uh, you know, it, it's just incredible because everything you hear about him is true. He's not just the the nicest person in Hollywood. It, it's all true that he's the that couldn't be in my dreams a better collaborator. He has no ego. He's so kind, and he listens. and And we've just been working, you know, working together with someone that good. As you said, one of the greatest actors of all time. I mean, it's it's extraordinary, and. And it's someone playing his instrument on the highest level. And you're just trying to hear if there was one wrong note. <laughs> and it's, you know, after two, three takes, you move on because it's just all there. Yeah, I, I, I can't imagine. So um, one of the things they say is to not work with animals, babies or children. And so you chose to work with a cat, a baby and two children. Uh, at what point of the shoot were you like, what did I get myself into? Uh, you know, when, when I was looking at the weather in Pittsburgh, <laughs> but but I think the cat Schmegel was probably the toughest one. Schmegel had you know sometimes Schmegel just didn't want to, just left set and walked off, and then and then I had to beg the producer for a green screen day because I did I don't like CG animals and CG cats. So we then we kept shooting the Schmegel on a green screen and then to comp him into the into the into the picture. But we ultimately it's ninety percent it's all Schmegel's performance. So I was very happy with that. But that that was much harder than the kids or anything else. Yeah, you know something. I I have cats, um, and they they sometimes don't want to do anything that you want them to do. But so one of the things I love cats, and yeah. I want to know if you agree that one of the morals of this movie is that uh, a cat can help save your life. Absolutely, and I think and the cat can become your best friends, and it's unconditional love until they get very mad at you. <laughs> yes, I yeah I I've not had a cat yet scratch at me. I think you know this about me, but I love talking about the editing process because that's where it all comes together. Yeah. And one of the things about this movie is you need to find the right tone to make what uh, what Otto is going through believable to the audience uh, because he's contemplating suicide, and which is a very serious thing. So can you sort of talk about finding the right tone and the right takes in the editing room to make sure the audience felt what they needed to feel? You, you know, obviously, I was very uh, blessed because there was a, a, you know, the novel there, and Frederick Backman did a great job in the novel, balancing it. And there was the Swedish version of the film, which also did a very good job with that. So there was source material. But then once we got into the editing, you know, we did I did a lot of the ins and outs of the flashbacks, which often happens during during the suicide attempts. There were often these moments where I had Tom play them, and then Truman play play them as well. Truman Hanks, who plays the younger younger Otto. And and then use a lot of I don't know if you realize that we lose a lot of the soundtrack as well to to sort of gap the bri bridges. For instance, the Kate Bush song in the the moment later in the movie between present day and the past. So you have this continuous emotional bandage between the two worlds that it doesn't take you out. But it was really the silver lining trying to find the humor and the dark and the darkness, the yin and the yang to really. 
uh, you know, it t- took a while, but sure. eventually I think we got there that I'm, I'm really pleased. And I hope, you know, in the pe- people, because it's about a community coming together, I hope that they community like experience the movie in a theater because they can laugh and cry together. Listen, I, I've said this again and again, nothing should be watched. Uh, movies need to be seen on the biggest screen possible. Uh, I mean, there's nothing like seeing a movie in a movie theater. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, I agree. And especially, especially movies like this. A hundred percent. So what what did you learn from any friends and family screenings or test screenings that impacted the finished film? Did you make any big change because the you know, from what people said? No, uh, I must say we were very blessed. Our first test screening was in New Jersey and the te- and the movie tested really high. And, uh, you know, and people really embraced the movie and they laughed and they cried and they had all pretty much reactions. But we just kept on working on it and then had another test screening after that and uh, kept editing it and finessing it. And it's, you know how it is. It's you massaging, you massaging. Yeah. And we still probably, if the movie wouldn't come out, we still would be editing. Yeah, I've, I've spoken to a lot of directors who basically say, uh, it's taken out of their cold, dead hands, you know, uh, because they just want to keep it anyway. Um, so I have to ask you, what is actually I've been looking forward to seeing White Bird, uh, a wonder story. But when am I going to see it? Uh, it's it's coming out next year. Uh, Lionsgate had, a, you know, a change in their marketing team, as you know. Uh, so there's a new team in now and uh, they're all very excited. And and uh, I love the movie. Personally, I can't wait for you to see it. It's, a uh, you know. It's a, it's a departure, but anytime when you're back from Brazil, I'm happy to set up a screening. <laughs> I'm, ha- I'm happy to set up a screening for you anytime, Steve. Listen, I, I do want to see it. Um, my last question for you: You've done so many different projects and so many different genres. You know, you've made a lot of movies, a lot of projects. Of, of your career, what shot do you think ended up being the hardest to pull off, and why? Um, you know, I think it was early in my career. It was a, in Finding Neverland. There was sort of a a, a crane shot through the theater and th- just ending up right in, on on Freddie Highmore and on his face. And uh, when you know, ultimately, when he's watching, uh, you know, the creation of himself uh, of Peter Pan and and that shot because I wasn't uh, I wasn't at that point used to to work with such big equipment. Because you know, Monster Ball was all very low budget, and then for suddenly, finally, I had a crane, and I had this techno crane that sort of like had this, uh, which uh, had the motion control and all these things on it, and and I, I just like was scared that the camera would really hit the kid or something. So so because it came so close, but they all said, "Oh no, it's all safe. Don't worry about it." And I was just wasn't it so so used to it that I was instead of watching the shot, I was just was worried that 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 that, that he will be safe because the camera was like flying in, into him and and then stopped at a certain point and you know, which they say it's safe and everything else and they tested it 10,000 times, but still that that kind of shot just emotionally, like, yes, I wanted to shot. I storyboarded, had it in my mind, but I said, oh, how are we going to execute? Oh, it's not, not a problem. We can do this very easily. So that was, uh, that we, you know, we ended pulling it off. I'm just going to, I have to stop. I'm just going to say congrats. I hope the movie's thank a you. big hit for you. And thank you for giving me your time. Okay. And thank you. Enjoy your time in South America.